Hello and welcome back to Man V Film. It's time for another top 10 of movies that you can watch for November 2021. Now remember, if you like these lists, share, subscribe, like the video, or even join the membership program or the Patreon to make sure that they keep coming. So let's just dive straight in. Number 10, level 16. 16 year old Vivian is trapped in the Vistilis Academy, a prison like boarding school, keeping herself and sticking her neck out for no one, until she's reunited with Sophia, the former friend who betrayed her. Together, the girls embark on a dangerous search to uncover the horrifying truth behind their imprisonment. Level 16 is a mystery movie, and because of the big mystery at the heart of this one, I don't really want to go too much into the plot. Basically, these girls are stuck within this school where every year they move up a certain level. Every day they have to follow a similar routine. They get their tutelage and then they have their program of health and well-being. And all the while, they start to realise that something may be wrong with the teachers, with the people, with the entire situation that they are in. And it becomes increasingly desperate for the girls. It's terrifically tense. It's got a wonderful mystery at the heart of it and something um, which you really kind of wonder where it's going and it's quite nice the way it plays out. Definitely worth checking out. Number nine, observe and report. Bipolar mall security guard Ronnie Barnhart is called into action to stop a flasher for turning the shopper's paradise into his personal peep show. But when Barnhart can't bring the culprit to justice, a surly police detective is recruited to close the case. Observe and Report is one of these very rare movies where I can never figure out if I hate the movie or if I love it. It's always right down the middle. You know, you have Seth Rogen as Ronnie, who's terrific. You get Ray Liotta as the cop that comes in and just can't be bothered with him. Uh, there's a wonderful host of characters as well. It's very mean-spirited in the way it's set up, um, kind of poking fun at Ronnie a lot as well. And it's one of those movies that kind of distasteful <laughs> in certain aspects and makes you wonder, uh, should I be laughing at this? Should I be enjoying this? I, it's one of those movies that has me laughing out loud and then wondering if I should be enjoying this and the next scene's really downhearted and bleak and dark and it doesn't really work hand in hand but I often go back to this movie hoping to figure out whether I like it or hate it. Number eight, Cliffhanger. Whilst crossing a ledge 4,000 feet above the earth, Cape's friend's equipment fails to work and she slips out of his hand, falling to the ground. A year later, Gabe is asked to go back to the same mountain range to rescue a group of stranded people. The only catch is that these so-called stranded people are in fact looking for three boxes filled with a hundred million and they need the mountain ranger to lead them to the money. It's Sylvester Stallone, it is a big, brash, early 90s action movie and it delivers on everything you're expecting. Wonderful action, over the top bad guy played by John Lithgow giving soliloquies that just make no sense but are darn cool to watch and you know, it's just incredibly fun. Directed by Rennie Harlan, this was at a time where he could do no wrong and with uh, Sylvester Stallone, they created a wonderfully fun and engaging film. One that just cheers me up whenever I put it on. A, a kind of comfort movie, so to speak. Number seven, 13 Ghosts. Arthur and his two children, Kathy and Bobby, inherit his uncle Cyrus's estate, a glass house that serves as a prison to 12 ghosts. When the family, accompanied by Bobby's nanny and an attorney, enter the house, they find themselves trapped inside an evil machine designed by the devil and powered by the dead to open the eye of hell. Adapted from the William Castle movie, this is an over-the-top, ridiculously silly but incredibly fun horror movie. I think the ghosts look particularly gnarly, scary, horrible. I think the idea of the glass house is just appalling, <laughs> but hey, it works in the context of the film. There are some performances that are just over-the-top but wonderfully so. I really do appreciate those kind of performances, especially in a movie like this that has some wonderful uh, special effects, some wonderful horror moments, um, and is incredibly silly, playful, but 
throwaway fun. Number six, there is someone inside of the house. As the countdown to graduation begins, McCanny and her classmates are stalked by a killer intent on exposing their darkest secrets to the entire town, terrorising victims while wearing a lifelike mask of their own faces. With a mysterious past of her own, McCanny and her friends must discover the killer's identity before they become victims themselves. This is one of those recommendations with a little bit of a caveat. I think it's good, but it really falters in the last third, but it has a lot of really good slasher traits. If you're a fan of the genre, you're going to find something here that you like, you may not love it, but it's enjoyable. It has some really interesting set pieces, some wonderful gore and effects, and really leans into the slasher tropes for a little while within the movie. It does break away from that in certain scenes. Some scenes I really love where the killer is in amongst a group of people and people are aware of it. You know, it just breaks the mould a little bit, but oh, that final third really kind of lets it down a little bit. Number five, Johnny Mnemonic. The year is 2021 and half the Earth's population is suffering from a disease known as nerve attenuation syndrome. Johnny, a mnemonic data courier, is hired to carry 320 gigabytes of crucial information to safety from the Pharmacom Corporation. Pursued by the Yakuza agents and a crazed cyborg, Johnny must deliver the data or die in 24 hours. I love Johnny Mnemonic. It's one of those mid-90 Keanu Reeves movies that seems to have been forgotten, but I think it's ready for a resurgence. I think it's got incredible moments. It's got a talking dolphin. It's got Dolph Lundgren as a crazed preacher killing people randomly. Yakuza, a kind of post-neo-noir um, cityscape full of neon lights and perpetually raining weather. It's got everything I kind of like in movies. It's incredibly silly yet again, but oh, so much fun. I strongly recommend this one. Number four, Night Teeth. To earn some extra cash, quirky college student Benny moonlights as a chauffeur for one night. His task, drive two mysterious young women around Los Angeles for a night of party hopping. Taken captive by his client's charm, he soon learns that his passengers have their own plans for him and an insatiable thirst for blood. Night Teeth is another Netflix original. This one was more my kind of uh, movie. I enjoyed it. It's not 100% perfect, but it's fun. And the fun comes from the three characters within the limousine a lot of the time. The two vampiric girls and Benny, who's kind of stuck there, realising the real horrors that exist within this world and possibly his future as well. There is tremendous action set pieces that come out of nowhere in the movie that are so fun, but it's the playful nature between the women and Benny and how the relationships kind of blossom throughout the movie. I think it's really kind of uh, endearing the way that we have these characters kind of, well, I don't want to spoil that certain aspect of it, but the action more than makes up for some of the, the downfalls within the movie. There's a great deal of world building done here that is terrifically well done. And yeah, I would say check it out. Number three, house party. Young kid has been invited to a party at his friend Play's house, but after the fight at school, kid's father grounds him. Nonetheless, kid sneaks out when his father falls asleep, but he doesn't know that three of the thugs at school have decided to give him a lesson in behaviour. House Party is one of those movies that I, I caught on TV in the early 90s, fell in love with it, I loved the double act of Kid and Play, I thought they were incredibly funny, and this spawned a couple of sequels as well, which I kind of like, to a lesser degree. This one has a host of familiar faces, it's incredibly funny, bright, colourful, great music, and just wonderfully hilarious. It's a time capsule for me, one of those movies that I can put on and it takes me back to a place and a time when I was younger and loved this kind of film. So maybe nostalgia is leaving me a little bit. But I'd love to know your thoughts if you're just discovering this one. Number two, Desperado. A mariachi plunges headfirst into the dark border underworld when he follows a trail of blood to the last of the infamous Mexican drug lord, Butcho, for an action-packed, bullet-riddled showdown with the help of his best friend and beautiful bookstore owner. The mariachi tracks Butcho, takes on his army of desperados and leaves a trail of blood of his own. 
Robert Rodriguez Desperado is another one of those amazing action movies. It just came out of nowhere and was so fresh and so different and so explosive, giving us Antonio Banderas as the action star we never knew we needed. It's filled with cameos of great uh, actors as well, but it's the action, the way it's shot, the stylistic nature of it, the explosive violence that's within this one that brings me back to it and puts a huge smile on my face every time I'm watching this fantastic film. Oh man, I want to go and watch Desperado again right now. Number one, The Nightingale. Set in 1825, Claire, a young Irish convict woman, chases a British officer through the rugged Tasmanian wilderness, bent on revenge for a terrible act of violence he committed against her family. On the way, she enlists the services of an Aboriginal tracker named Billy, who is also marked by trauma from his own violence-filled past. After all the fun and engaging films I've recommended, I'm going to finish off with a dramatic gut punch of a movie. The Nightingale is one of those movies that you will not forget, opening up with some traumatic scenes of violence. Uh, this movie really hones in on the act of revenge. As we watch Claire try to struggle with the grief of what has happened to her and with her blood-soaked, hell-bent on revenge attitude. It is one of these movies that is kind of interesting in the way that we see two people who have both been wronged by a similar person really kind of come together and put away their differences, realising that they have a kind of common goal and it's probably going to be mutual self-destruction. But I'm kind of getting on with it nonetheless. The bad guys are horrifically bad and horrible and oh, you just don't want to see them succeed in anything that they do because they are just terrible people. And this is a movie that is captivating, enthralling, beautifully shot, beautifully acted and one that I said you will not forget. So there we have it, 10 films that I hope you love or at least find something there that you want to check out, something that keeps your passion for film going this month. I'd love to know your thoughts on this list in the comment box below and as always there's content up here that you can see more of my stuff and remember to subscribe, like, share the video or join the membership program in the Patreon if you really want to support me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.